honor to be joined by two members of Simba Plan, David Desrosi and Jess Dinko. Gentlemen, hello, welcome. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Good, good how are you guys? Good. good, man, good to see you. It's good to be back here. Uh, so the new album is Taking One for the Team. Uh, I, and I, I had to listen to uh, some of the tracks, and there are, are a few writers, critics out there that will say a, a, a few of the tracks are, are a bit of a departure for you guys in, in terms of your, your, your sound musically. Um, where, where did that come from, and how would you say that this album sort of came, came together for you guys? Yeah, I would say that if anything, you know, on the album three, our eponymous record, we took more chances then. And uh, over the years, we, uh, we decided that Simple Plan is an elastic kind of aesthetic that could probably, you know, bring us into places that, you know, that, that would be kind of uninspected, you know. And uh, on this particular record, if anything, we decided to throw back even more to our first two records, you know, so it's very pop-punk, very melodic, very energetic, but yes, there are moments where, you know, we're trying, I don't want to go to bed, like a funkier track, we're, we're thinking about, uh, I dream about you, uh, singing in the rain, so tracks are, you know, slightly left field for Simple Plan, the reality of it is, over the years, you have to maintain a foot in your history, of, in, in who people expect you to be, but at the same time, as musicians, you've got to keep things interesting. So I think it's important to push the boundary, respect who you are. Certain times, you know, we probably went too far uh, over the years. But I think as long as you do it with honesty, integrity, um, Simple Plan could be the vehicle for many different genres. Well, and, you know, what does that say about sort of the, the culture of music as a whole that, you know, critics and, and those who write about music so often want to box bands into a into a specific corner or a specific genre being like this is what you have to be because this is what you became famous as i mean yeah that's, that's always been a, a weird one and and to be honest with you since since the record number two like we always like jeff was saying we always tried to be sounding like simple plan you know and it's, it's like people want to put you in a certain genre but at some point like pierre's voice is very recognizable and whatever he's going to sing on is going to sound like Simple Plan. I mean, th th that's what I feel like. Uh, and the reality of it is, it's easier to box things, you know? When you have a friend that wears crazy hats, people know him as a crazy hat guy. As soon as he does it anymore, people are confused. Yeah. And it's suddenly the girl is the girl with the red head, you know, and she becomes the pink haired girl, and that's just weird, you know? It confuses everybody. It's just easier to box everything and make it, you know, easy to swallow and easy to understand. But yeah, I think being in a band is uh, an evolving thing. It's a dynamic process. Um, but we are still the same five guys. You know, that's that's an anomaly in this in this day and age of music. Uh, same five guys, kind of fighting the same way in the studio. Uh, we're, we're still very much involved and passionate about what we do. Um, but as I said, you know, people expect you to do certain things, and that's all right. I mean, it's part of it. You know, you wouldn't expect uh, the Rolling Stones come out, to come out with a Drake record, you know, and and that's, that's fair. You know, I understand that. But at the same time, if they did collaborate with Drake and do something crazy and really fun, I'd be up for it. Uh, you you mentioned that you know all five of you are still together after nearly 20 years, which is which is pretty rare these these days. Yeah. Um, and you know it's, it's well known that uh, that Pierre and Chuck are, are in charge lyrically. But how much do you do the rest of you as a band contribute to, to the actual music of, of, of each song? I mean, it really depends. It's a song by song basis. But I would say that um, the more we, uh, the older we get, the more respect out of the others you get, and the more freedom you kind of get to. You know, for instance, there's this track called "I Don't Want to Go to Bed." that um, has some kind of a weird bass line, like super funky, and everyone's just like, it, it's, it's not weird anymore, but it could have been weird. Yeah. And uh, we were like, well, you know, David, are you up for it? It's kind of strange, like, how are we gonna do this? David just walks in and pops like the craziest funk bass line. Nobody knew that he could actually do that. And suddenly, you know, the guy steps up to the plate and nails it. Um, so the process is about that. We're challenging ideas, you know, as we get into the studio arrangements, we'll challenge, uh, you know, melodic content, and that's the process. So it's it's basically, if anything, on this particular record, we went back to living together throughout the process of the record. Uh, we were discussing ideas, you know, like all the time, getting in there and kind of reconstructing the songs from the ground up and challenging the ideas. So the process is very uh, 
very much about a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, trials, trial, trial yeah. and error, and uh, and yeah, we, I would say that there were tracks where you know the whole arrangement was there. We scrapped it, redid it again. Um, yeah, it's a song by song thing, but definitely a lot of discussions. I wanted to ask you about I Don't Want to Go to Bed because that, that's a very interesting track. I love the music video. I don't know, where, where did that come from? They had to basically do Baywatch. That came from um, Chuck's wet dreams uh, back in the <laughs> Well, it was, it was probably his desire to show him uh, show his six-pack shirtless as that's well. That's right, that's right. Um, you know, I mean, growing up, we with the age that we are, we, uh, we've all watched uh, Baywatch, you know. And, uh, See, I didn't have money to buy Playboy, so, so that was yeah, the closest yeah. I got to a ride. I mean, we had two really good reasons to watch it. More than two. The left really, and yeah, the right, right Yeah, yeah, but on every single actress. Yes, that's right. That's a lot of reasons right there. That's a lot of reasons. Uh, did, now, I, did, I saw that David Hasselhoff has a cameo. This is going to be huge. Did you guys reach out to him and, and yeah, we say, did. like, you want to you do this? Oh, absolutely. And the guy was a fair player, like, super... He's into the joke. Like, he knows that people are kind of laughing at the whole, like, persona that he puts out. And he's super cool about it. And and really, I don't think we could have made that video if we wouldn't have had the, cam the cameo. Like, he makes it, it makes it so funny and so, like, tongue-in-cheek, you know? Because it, it's kind of a fine line. It's a tribute to Baywatch. But it, there's a tongue-in-cheek element to it, and he kind of nails it. At the end, it's like, okay, it's a joke. You know, it's not like five guys thinking that they're too hot and and, and kind of running on a beach. You know, it's clearly a joke. And how did how did uh, working with Nelly for that track come about? It was a smoky situation, wasn't it? Smoky. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that um, you know the the intention was very simple. We wanted to to kind of bring the song somewhere else, and 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 Pierre's voice. As David said, it's pretty unique, pretty recognizable, but it's got, it's got some limitations as well. And I don't think that we're gonna have a, we're gonna hear Pierre rapping or uh, rhyming anytime soon. So it was it was pretty obvious that we needed to call some help, you know. And um, we put a list together of, of, of singers that had, you know, the, a knack of keeping things melodic, but at the same time more, you know, urban, more. And uh, Nelly was on top of the list, and he accepted, you know. And and the guy's just super talented, you know. He came up with like crazy lyrical ideas on the spot. Yeah, on the spot. Just nailed them, harmonized them. Super musician, super nice guy. So it was cool to work with him. Uh, you know, we're we're talking about this album, and I think there's 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 a perception among some that. You know, if you watch videos like you and other sort of Canadian pop punk people, that there's a certain silliness that that goes into it. How, how do you how do you guys feel about that that sort of re representation, if you will? Yeah, it's because of Celine Dion. There's silliness. You know? Oh shit! Silliness. Yeah. yeah. yeah it don't is, worry about it, it. It is part of the heritage when you think about Gob, some forty one. Um, I, I think. I, I think it's kind of a I don't know how do you say that a, a tradition, you know. But at the same time, we've done very serious videos. Perfect. We've done uh, crazy, untitled. Um, yeah, I think it's important to balance it out. And I think as a band, you know, you're showcasing your personalities. A lot of fans love the music, but also love, you know, what we what we bring out, what we say, and how we say things. So yeah, I think it's it's fun to poke fun at yourself. And when you know, you, when you have a song like "I Don't Want to Go to Bed," you could take it literally. And, and make a really shitty video, you know, I'm a, oh shit, I was gonna say something bad. Uh, a very kind of like modern pop video, or you can make it a little more fun, and that's the avenue that we chose to take. So I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a case by case thing, but it's always fun to use the imagery of a video to bring people into like a different vibe than what the lyrical content naturally brings you to. Um, you know, Given that you guys have been together now for, for you know, the same group of guys for, for 17 years, do you, do you ever think about like how how you survived together, and you know if if what what would you be doing if, if you weren't doing this at all? Uh, I would uh, I would probably be a pilot. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I want to be a pilot eventually, but I'd probably be yeah I'd probably be like a commercial pilot or something. You know what I had. Um a dad of one of my very close friends told me, dude, just put your eggs, all your eggs in one basket and just go for it. You know, because when you're actually kind of maybe there, maybe that way, what ends up happening is you're not passionate about anything. So for me, it was all about Simple Plan. It was about music. And I just went like full on, you know. But 
you could do what ifs forever, you know. I'm in this band and I'm gonna keep going as long as you know people want to hear us. We're good friends. We're still we still get along. We're still very passionate about it. So yeah, we're gonna keep going. And and as far as what I could have done, or so many things, you know. And and you know what? Now people live longer than ever. Maybe I'll be able to go back to school. And no, that's not gonna happen. But you know what? Like there's so many options that I could do. You know, I love doing business. You know, I've had ventures. Uh, I still will have ventures, you know, business ventures. Um, yeah, I think it's a passionate world, it's a fun world, and I'm going to try different things, you know. Uh, finally, would you, if, if you could pick one song off of taking one for the team that, that was your favorite, do you think you could pick one? It's very difficult, but I would say that, um, mm, let me think. I, I like the faster ones, like I love Farewell, Nostalgic. Opinion Overload is actually pretty cool. I'll tell you why. We needed that song to start the show. A kick-ass, fast, energetic song. And that song is exactly the answer to that. That was the mission statement, you know. And the song is also about, lyrically, um, you know, you're on social networks all the time. You're always, like, answering fans, getting their feedback. And at some point, it's, like, pretty confusing, you know. Do you like that record or you don't? What is it? Like, what, what's your opinion? And at some point, you just get pretty confused and you have to shut it down. And you have to go back to yourself and to the band and be like, what is it that we want to do? Without anybody's, you know, telling us what to do, what do we want to do? And that's where the record took us. Um, for me, it would be uh, Kiss Me Like Nobody's Watching. That's a good one. I just like that song. It's just got a good vibe. It reminds me a bit of Tom Petty. Tom Petty. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice. It's refreshing. It sounds fresh to me. Well, the new album is Taking One for the Team. Jeff, David, thanks so much, guys. Thank thanks you. For doing this.